Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh. Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Racha Kudash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well and blessings to the hopeful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. In the sincere hopes that we may edify and feed the flock and the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. This is Amos chapter 3, verse 6. And it says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord have not done it? What I want to do is turn your attention to a couple of clips that I have loaded up here. You know, and it's plain to see that we're in the times of the end. You see what's happening on the earth. You got the pestilences, you know, you got the jungle bumps out there, the, the monkey bars. You know, you had people that were lining up, you know, pretty much had their backs against the wall being told by the government to go out there and get the line up and take the Vaseline. You know, uh, you got inflation, okay? You got wars and rumours of wars. But the scripture just read, shall there be an evil in a city and the Lord have not done it. You see, all these cities that, you know, that are around the, around the globe, you know, you got uproars of the people, protests, you got all kinds of evil happening, you know, on a global scale. And that is a clear indicator of the times that we're in. That is a clear indicator that we are in the last days. And you see, as things ramp up and get more violent out here and get more evil and get more distressful or distressing, you know, you're going to see the true colours of people come out, man. All right. Like I said, I want to turn your attention to a couple of clips that I have. I just wanted to open up on that scripture. All right. And I got an article that I want to read. In fact, let's read a bit of this article before I get the clip. And this is from RT News. It's a pop today. All right. It says dozens dead in U.S. flood. All right. It says torrential downpours in Kentucky have killed at least 25. And the search for missing people may last weeks. All right, so they over there in Kentucky, they had torrential downpour, all right, where at least 25 people are dead out of nowhere. Okay. The scriptures speak about slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. See, the time of judgment, when the time of judgment pours out, you know, when there's judgment that goes, goes on out here, that's when people are, you know, that's when people, they want to start running around like headless chickens calling upon calling upon God all right but you know <clears throat> and you know especially our people man you know because they have a zeal for the most high but not according to knowledge you got a lot of our people that you know they're into all these different religions and you know worshiping gods of the other nations but but they can't save them you know and did you have jakes and the jakes are going to get caught up in all kinds of hell in these last days you got jacob's trouble on the horizon soon like i said you got you know, the famines, con confusion, uh, you know, you're going to have these pop-up centers, checkpoints, people getting, because remember, Esau has a new world order agenda. When I say Esau, that's talking about the elites of the so-called white race, not all so-called white people, because you've got some people that are from our nation that just look like so-called white people, but they're really, they're, you know, their lineage goes back to our forefather, Jacob. All right. But for the most part, you know, you got the Edomites that, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, the earth has been given into their hand, the wicked, starting with the elite to Esau or Edom. You know? And you see, when there's when there's times like this one, you know, that happens on the earth, you know, that's why that's why we say, you know, um, or the scripture says rather in Hosea 5 and 15, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense, and in their affliction they will seek my face. Salakia. And, and seek my face in their affliction, they will seek me earlier. Kind of jumped the gun there. All right. So the Lord said in, in, their, in your affliction that you will be seeking the Lord. And the word early means diligently. But you see the difference with the elect is they're seeking the, the face of the Lord now. They're seeking, you know, the mercy of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai ahead of schedule before shit hits the fan. You know, and I'm talking about the shit has already hit the fan, but I'm talking about really hits the fan. You know, um... So let's go ahead and pull up a couple of these clips here. You know, so people are dying. You know, we're in a time now where death 
is being dished out to people like it's nothing. All right, so let's go to this flood. A center tonight of the nation's latest extreme weather disaster. At least 16 people have died in flooding that rewrote the record books and ravaged neighboring states as well. Amna Nawaz has our report. The town of Garrett, Kentucky is hardly recognizable. Inundated by torrents of rainwater that flooded streets and wiped out homes and businesses, Rachel Patton was caught in the deluge. Everything's gone, like, everything is gone. The whole life is gone. Her mother also had... You see what I'm saying? Everything is gone. Everything is gone. You know, my whole life is gone. People's home, home, uh, homes, houses are getting uh, destroyed, man. People's homes getting wrecked, you know. Probably had all kinds of personal, you know, um, how do you say, sentimental, you know, valuables that you you held dear, things that have been family heirlooms that got passed down, and you know, all getting carried away by a flood. You know, you got families with children as young as three years old, four years old. You know, in these homes, you know, you got families that you know were making plans, families that have pets, dogs you know birds and stuff and you know all kinds of stuff I'm, I'm just putting it out here because this is reality this is how people live you know people live in their homes and they you know your, your home is supposed to be a place of comfort your, your home is supposed to be like your little sanctuary but you see the Lord don't care about that when it's when it's the time for judgment that's when your home could get swept away with the flood man all right and, and it's the heavenly father that does these things because you see people got it all twisted they think that the heavenly father you know, he's just all about love and that he can't do no evil, you know, and that he ain't like a, he ain't a just power, that he ain't about to pour out his indignation, which the word indignation means justifiable anger or righteous anger, you know, and, and, and no one's innocent out here. All right. No one is innocent out here, man. And you know that scripture, there's a scripture in Isaiah 45 and 7. Um, that says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, do all these things, man. So, you know, the Heavenly Father controls both sides, basically, you know. Uh, we just read it in Amos 3 and 6, you know. And that's one of the, you know, that's one of the scriptures that always stuck with me when I first heard it, when I when I came in the truth. Because I said to myself, look, man, I'm, I'm being put on game. I'm, I'm, I'm being clued up to what the real nature or the true nature of the Lord is. And one of the many titles of the Lord is the King of Terrors. All right, the, all, the scriptures also said that the Lord is a man of war. People don't seem to realize that when Yahweh Shai comes back, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, you know, the scripture says that in righteousness, he's going to judge and make war. You know? So the true nature of who the world calls God and Jesus Christ, the true nature, we're reading about it. Okay? For all you God so love the world individuals out there and God so love individuals out there, then how do you explain natural disasters? How do you explain, I don't know, these pestilences and, 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 and the bad times that are upon the earth, people running around in distress? How do you explain that? How do you make sense of it when, you, when it comes to the scriptures? Well, we're reading it. We're actually making sense of it now through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And if you can't see that, that this is the true nature of the Lord, then the Lord has pretty much left you in a state of mind where you're just completely, you know, you're just completely out there. You don't have no understanding. You don't understand the true nature of the Lord. And that's why you don't fear the Heavenly Father. That's why you got guys out there committing adultery, eating shrimp, pork, lobster, doing all kinds of wickedness, man. Um, and not fearing the consequences because they don't fear Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. But if they really knew, you know, what the, the Lord has planned for these unbelievers out here, then they get right in a heartbeat. But the Lord has blinded their minds to be able to receive his fear. You know? Had to be rescued. We had to put her on a door to get her out of her trailer because she was flooded in. She couldn't get out. She's on oxygen. Search and rescue teams backed by the National Guard are still searching for missing people. But determining the exact number of missing has been a challenge, as many people were stranded without cellular service. Into today, just days after a storm topped a daily rainfall record set back in 1915. Our boat has arrived, Mary. This mother and her nine-month-old daughter had to be rescued from their home. And you see that? 
You know, this mother and her daughter, she's nine months old. And they're getting having to get rescued on a boat. All right, you got the so-called black woman there with her child. See, people don't seem to understand, man. Like, the law don't really discriminate because of age. And, you know, the spirits are on the earth back here in these last days to get judged. We're in a time of judgment, man. You know, the Lord don't care how old your nippers are, don't care how old, how old they are, how scared they might be. You know, this is, this is, you're dealing with the king of terrors, man. All right, remember the scriptures speak about, you know, from the, from the issues of death that come from the Lord. All right. And in the midst of all of that, remember, you got, you got protests, wars, rumors of wars, you got famines, you got forest fires. And I got another clip as well, man, going into, um. The forest fires over there in California, man, you know, so things are turning up. This is Ezekiel 9 and 4. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city and through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. You know, and that word mark there is Thawa in the Hebrew, which means an exemption from that judgment. So, you know, the elect are going to pretty much be exempt from that judgment. You know, when the time comes, now that don't mean we ain't going to get tested. You know, the elect are going to get tested. The scriptures speak about the fiery trial, which is to try us. All right, the scriptures speak about the hour of temptation. When Esau pretty much manipulates these global crises and comes forth with the solution, when everyone's backs against the wall and he comes through with the ultimate solution, which is to push the karagma out there. So you, you know, you take that implant. And if you don't take it, then you ain't going to be able to buy or sell. See, but, you, you know, the elect ain't going to be deceived by that. All right, and that's why the scripture says, my servant shall eat. But you see, you know, the rest of the people, the rest of, of our people, should I say, the wicked of our people, they're going to get caught up in all kinds of destruction and they're going to die dishonorable deaths, man. And they're going to come back in the kingdom and they're going to be ashamed. Like it says in Daniel, the 12th chapter. All right, but the point is, let's go to verse five. And to the others, he said, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city, Right? Shall there be an evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? We just read that in Amos 3 and 6, right? It says, and smite, and smite means to kill, all right? It says, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity, all right? Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. And the Lord's got angels created for vengeance, which we're going to get that in Sirach 39. Okay, let not your eyes spare, okay? Um... It says to pity, to have compassion, to spare, to look upon with compassion. All right. So when them angels get the, the green light to, to pretty much open up on this place, the Lord said, let not your eyes spare. Don't have no compassion. Don't have no pity. All right. The word pity, hamal, to spare, pity, to have compassion on. All right. When you have compassion, the definition of compassion is a, a, a sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of other or of others. All right, and the heavenly Father ain't trying to hear that. Okay, because the doors of repentance, you know, they're open right now. Okay, but they 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 they're closing very very fast, man. All right, and that's why the scripture says. I'm just gonna go back to that Isaiah fifty five and six. It says, seek ye of the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. <laughs> All right. So we got to seek. we got to seek the Lord now, man. You know, just speak about as it was in your mind to go astray, seeing being returned, seek him 10 times more, man. 10 represents completion. So and we really ultimately we come back to this truth. We know who we are and, you know, we know that we're the Israelites, we're the chosen people of the Lord, that we're holy and we're supposed to be, the word holy means separate. We're supposed to be doing right in the sight of the Lord, right? Rehearsing the righteous acts, all right? We come back to the truth, you know, we're supposed to be seeking the Lord 10 times more, okay? We're supposed to be seeking the Lord, man, okay? And we can't do enough for the Lord. And the Lord said that after you've done all these things, still said that we're unprofitable servants. We did that, which is our duty to do. So we have a duty to pretty much blow the trumpet, man, to sound that alarm, all right? Now, I got the... Um, which this is going to line up now. So what you're seeing here is, is, is a lack of compassion, you know, by, from the king of terrors when it comes to the judgment. Because ultimately, this is, this is just. This is righteous anger. The righteous anger of the Lord. All right? And that thumbnail right there, that picture right there, that just looks like the image of pure misery and distress. Complete hopelessness, man. 
You know, it's all good and well when you you know you're twerking in a nightclub. You know, and you you know you're getting all up in men's face. You back chatting them, and you you know you jumping and hop, hopping from man to man. And, and I'm not saying that this is this woman is doing that. You know, but a lot of women out there are. She could be doing that. But you see, at the end of the day, the Lord is going to judge these people that are out here living in great pride. It's good to remember. The scripture says because of their pride, the cities. Let's get that. Let's get that scripture. Because of their pride, right? Um, second is just fifteen. And um, and eighteen. It says, for because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. Because these people are out here living up in great pride, man. And you got Israelites that, you know, are walking arm in arm with, you know, these faggots, these these alphabet people, talking about it. they they support men lying with men and women with women. You know, they got you know they've been given over to these vile affections, and they call that march. What do they what do they march in great pride? They call it pride marching. You know. So because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, right? Their houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. And, and what did the woman say about her house, man? Let's go back to that. You know, the houses being destroyed. Pulled through what was once their neighborhood in Hazelwood, Missouri. Um, you know? I'm the rescue effort goes on. Look at these houses, man. They're pretty much destroyed. All right? Let me go back to what that chick was saying at the beginning. Rachel Patton was caught in the deluge. Look at her. She's on her knees looking at her house. Her house has been destroyed. You know, these people are walking out there in great pride. They don't seem to consider the heavenly father. You know, he can open up them, them fucking the gates, of, the floodgates of death any at any time. The floodgates of destruction at any time, man. You know? And you have that saying, you know, tomorrow is not promised today. And that's why we got to thank you, how about Shemya Awashai, you know, that we even have oxygen to breathe, man. That we're just, we're able to wake up in our eyes, you know, we can see things with our eyes, we can still hear, that we ain't blind, that we ain't deaf, spiritually too, you know. That we actually have food to eat, a roof over our head, you know, don't take these things for granted, man. You know, a lot of people out here, they take these things for granted, but then when this, this happens, they end up on their knees looking at the devastation that's been left behind in their city because they live in great pride. You know, and if this woman's a heathen, then, then fuck her, man. You know, the, the Lord likens the heathen unto spittle anyway. You know, the, these heathen be getting judged. They be getting earthquakes and all kinds of things, getting trapped under rubble. You know, you got people that are missing off the back of this flood right now. They can't even find these bodies. All right. Everything's going like everything is going. The whole life is gone. Her mother also had to be rescued. We had to put her on. Look at these homes. These homes are destroyed, man. All right. Now let's go to um. I said I wanted to pull up the other one as well. Let's go to um, the California McKinney, a wildfire. Okay, burning over fifteen thousand acres of land. Check this out. Over here in Europe, you know, we had wildfires over here in Europe, and I believe you had um, what eight hundred plus people die over here in Europe because of these soaring temper temp temperatures. You know, um, you're having crop failures, you're having food processing plants being burnt down. These are the things that were ha that are happening on the earth in these last days, man. The Lord said that in the last days that perilous times shall come. So we're living in these times, man. Okay. And the Lord's got them fires out and floods going, the wars, the commotions, you know. These things are actually happening, okay? And this looks like a scene. Looks like a scene out of a movie or something. Like um you be looking at some of these images, you be thinking, is this life? Is this real? Like, but you see, you know, the, one of the things that I thought about was when the destruction of Babylon the Great happens, which is America. America is going to be looking like, like this, like a lake of fire. It's going to be worse than this. And you ain't just talking about 15,000 acres. You're talking America from the north to the south to the east to the west of America. It's going to be absolute scorched. It's going to become a lake of fire, man. All right. And that's in the Bible. All right. You know, fire is a cleansing agent and it's also 
a form of judgment that comes from the Lord. All right, and we can prove that in Sirach, um, thirty-nine, verse twenty-eight. And it reads, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. All right, so there's actual spirits that are out there that have been created, you know, tailor-made for vengeance to do the bidding of the Lord, you know, to get down with destruction. All right, and, they, and they're furious spirits and they lay on them sore strokes. And in the time of destruction, they pour out their force. All right, they don't, you don't drip it out, they pour it out, you know, because they're, what they're doing is they're doing the bidding of the Lord. They're doing the bidding of, that's the righteous anger of the Lord. You know? And appease the wrath of him that made them. Now check this out. It says fire. Okay? Fire is a form of judgment that the Lord uses. And hail. And famine. Alright? The time of famine is coming. You've got, you know, inflation. You've got the devaluing of the uh, these fiat, fiat currencies. Okay? You know, the food prices seem to be going up. And up and up and you know as the months go by you're able to put less into your basket and your, your baskets and your trolleys at the checkout because you know pretty much the money that you're making on your jobs it ain't stretching as much you know, because the value of the currency you're using is being devalued okay and that's what inflation's all about so you know the time of famine is coming you know and these people when they can't feed each other man they, they're going to be turning on one another now the scripture says that at that time shall friends fight one another against like, against one another like enemies, man. All right, but that's all them spirits. You know, that's the time, of, we're in the time of judgment. It says, and death, all these were created for vengeance, man. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. And the sword is being sharpened. All right, in the midst of all this, you've got detention centers being prepared, guillotines and, you know, um, all these things are being prepared. The sword is being, you've got Esau and the military, you know, doing urban warfare drills and, you know, getting the military to start cleaning out people in these in these cities, man. And really, that's the sword of the Lord on the left-hand side. Remember, um, King David said um, in Psalm 17 and uh, 13, all right, he said, um, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Okay, and this could be applied because ultimately this is talking about, you know, um, during the time of King Saul and that, but it could also be applied, you know, to um, to Esau, all right, and his blessing is a sword, all right, and he is known as the wicked, the wicked, you can read that in Malachi 1 and 4, they're known as the borders of wickedness, man, all right, no matter where you see these devils on the earth, that's where you're going to see wickedness sprung up, and this is the reason why you know, the earth isn't at, isn't at peace right now because, you know, Esau was set up to take peace from the earth. He wasn't set up to give peace to the earth. All right. In Revelation 6 and, and 4, let's get it. What does it read? It's, it speaks about the red horse. OK, it says, and they went out another horse that was red. All right. And they, what's the, the Hebrew word for red is Adawam, which that's Edom, which means red. And his blood shows forth through his skin. So it's really talking about these devils. All right, and a horse represents power, man. All right, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. So this is the reason why you got so much bloodshed on the earth, so much miseries, uproars of the people, protests, um, you know, just people just that are just outright, you know, running around, running amok on the on the globe, man. All right, um, because you know you got nothing but disorder out here. You know, Esau. Promotes death. He doesn't promote li promote life. He promotes chaos. He doesn't promote peace. All right. And if he aims, and if he seems to look like he's promoting peace, that's because he's already introduced the chaos. All right. And and his so called peaceful solution, you know, you best believe it has something to do with taking away more and more of your so called freedoms that you thought you had. All right. And that's called problem reaction solution. That's called auto abkeo. You start the chaos and then you come forward with a solution. And this is what they do. And what have they done? They've killed one another. It says, and they was given unto him a great sword. And that's what they've done. They've ruled the nations. They ruled over the nations with wrath, with a continual stroke, like the scriptures say, you know. And not only that, you know, Esau's got these, these weather manipulation programs as well, man. They, they show you that in that movie Geostorm with Gerard Butler, all right, where they can shoot things from satellites. They can start these forest fires. 
You know, they've got agent provocateurs set up in protests. You know, they've got bricks neatly laid up for these agent provocateurs to pick up these bricks and start fucking throwing them into... I'm talking about big companies on high streets, you know, to start people, get people rioting, get people to start looting in these neighbourhoods, you know, which ultimately then brings the value of the cost of these properties down because you've got the riots down there. And then who comes and, and buys it all up? Esau. Once the value of the properties go down. So Esau does, you know, when he when he does things, you know, Scripture says through his policies, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And that's the nature of Esau. You know, that's the nature that's the nature of this devil. You see, you never trust thine enemy, man. Alright? But ultimately, remember, he's a sword of the Lord on the left hand side. Psalm 17 and 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked. Which is thy sword. And that sword is being sharpened, man. And like you saw that woman that that you know that you know Eve with her daughter, a nine month old getting rescued by that boat. You know, e hey, Esau's gonna start rolling out there and he ain't gonna care how how old your, your daughter is. He ain't gonna care if you got a nine month old, if you got a damn near fresh ass newborn. When them soldiers come through, it's gonna be like the purge. They're gonna be clearing out these tower blocks and they're gonna be raping these women, raping babies, raping children. Raping daughters, this is what they're going to be doing You know, remember the scripture says they're going to be like madmen sparing none So we're in a time of seeking the Lord's forgiveness now Seek ye the Lord while he may be found Call ye upon him while he is near I'm saying this over and over again because hey, I'm saying it for myself I, I need to seek the Lord, I need to seek the Lord And I, and I pray that the Lord is, you know, is looking, you know, upon me and, and saying Look, this man, he fears me, you know that's what I pray for, you know, that's what I hope, you know, and that's why we can never really do enough, and you do a video, after you do a video, you think, shit, man, I need to do more, you know, I need to study more, I need to read more, I need to do, because at the end of the day, this is, we, we got to get this while we can, you know, because look what's happening on the earth, we're in a time of judgment, so going back to Ezekiel 9 and 4, it says, uh, uh, verse 6 now, it says, slay utterly old and young, because in the previous verse above we read about having no pity you know the lord ain't gonna show no compassion on these people out here a lack of sympathy all right slate utterly old and young both maids and little children when there's floods when there's earthquakes you know the, you know the rocks don't decide who they're gonna fall on um oh you know no that that baby's too young i can't you know a rock don't decide for itself i'm not gonna fall over there because that on that on that baby because it's too young no the heavenly father's got them angels working and whoever's meant to die is going to die. Spirits create for vengeance. Shall there be an evil in the city? And the Lord have not done it. It says both maids and little children and women. And the women is mentioned twice. All right. Because the women, these women out here, they're wicked, man. All right. And the time of judgment coming, they're going to be catching a lot of hell, man. The most hell. All right. But come not near upon any man. Come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And, you know, judgment shall start with the house of Israel. Those those that know that they're Israelites, man. All right. So we're in a time of judgment. All right. And the Lord, you know, from the Lord belong the issues from death. Okay. Um, Deuteronomy 32 and 39. It says, see now that I, even I am he and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. So people out there getting wounded, you know, getting cut in that murky, murky water, getting infected, getting pestilences. You got, you know, you got the jungle, fe you know, the jungle fever out there now, you know, the monkey bars, you know. It says, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hands. So these are the words, man, these are the Heavenly Father's words, man. There ain't no one that can deliver. You can't. Deliver yourself This is what I'm saying we, we can't be proud Like we got this And like we can save ourselves We can't save ourselves man All we have is the gift of faith Which that The faith that we have Is that which has been given man Ephesians 2 and 8 Or John 3 and 27 says You know um, A man can receive nothing Except to be given him from heaven You know So that's why we gotta Earnestly contend for the faith The scripture says in Hebrews 11 and 6 it is, Without faith it is impossible to please him So we have to show our faith by our works And that's why we do this work That's why we pray That's why we um, do these videos That's why we study That's why we um, You know we, we give charity amongst Amongst brothers And you know We pray for one another Which is also charity 
you know, and we fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. As the scriptures say, the fear of the Lord. Right? Like I said, you got a lot of people that don't fear the Lord, but Proverbs 1 and 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, man. And you know, the scripture says in Isaiah 33 and 6, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. All right, come not near upon who, upon whom any man upon whom has the mark, you know. So the Lord is going to protect His elect, man. Psalms ninety one, bro, you know. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So these fools that are out here that did, they didn't want to call upon the Lord, which really they couldn't, you know. But we still got to warn them anyway. All right, like it says in Ezekiel three and seventeen, you know, Son of Man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, you know. Give them warning from me, you know. The scripture says whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So we gotta do this. We gotta do this work. We've got to blow the trumpet. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Joel two and one. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain, you know? Alright, so um we get one more scripture in Psalm sixty eight. Alright. Issues of death, man. Um This is um Psalm sixty eight and twenty. It says, He that is our power is the God of salvation. And unto Yahweh the Lord belong the issues from death. All right, the Lord ain't gonna show no pity on on these people, who ever perished being innocent, man, or where were the righteous cut off. So, hey, we gotta do right in the sight of the Lord. The Lord's gonna have us, man. But you know, when these people perish, man, whoever perished being innocent, when these people die of grievous deaths, the Lord's got many different ways that He could take a take an individual out. All right, and they're gonna be no fucks given, man. When them death angels start rolling, you know, taking people, and the Lord requires their soul. You know, like the scriptures say, <laughs> this night thy soul is required. You know, thou fool, fools despise wisdom and instruction, man. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. All right, so with that, man, I pray you are edified. You know, fear your how about Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right, till the next time, Shalom.